Hello friends. So uh, earlier class this week we did talk about the basic concept of a wastewater treatment, how there are a set of various unit operations and unit processes are combined in order to make a complete treatment scheme or treatment setup. Uh, from this lecture onwards, we will uh, pick the specific units and have discussion onto that and we are going to start with the very first unit which is used is screening. So, screening is the uh, first unit operation in a water treatment plant. We are saying it unit operation because it is a purely physical process. Okay. There is no chemical reaction or nothing is involved in this. Okay. So, screen is typically a device with opening generally of the uniform size which is used to retain the suspended and floating coarse materials. So, like you can see this image over here, okay, there are lot of things are trapped here. What are trapped? There could be piece of cloths, there could be piece of woods. Uh, stems flowing in then leaves, plastic, rags, papers. So, all those things which uh, is found in the influent wastewater, you have a look at any wastewater channel and you will see that many of these things comes along with the wastewater channel in the uh, flow along with the wastewater. So, uh, these materials is easy to remove just by the filtration because they are uh, of much larger size, but it is essential to remove them in the beginning itself, beginning of the treatment process itself. Otherwise, if we let them go and then when we start let us say pumping sewage or to a reactor or uh, those kind of stuff. So, they could damage the uh, pumps, the other channels. So, all the like process equipments actually could be damaged by these materials. Okay. So, pump, walls, pipelines, impellers, so all those things could be damaged and in order to protect them, it is advisable to remove these materials at a very first stage itself, okay. so that uh, these does not move ahead. Now, if you see the features of a screen, so the screen elements generally consist of either parallel bar or rods it could be gratings, it could be wire mesh, it could be perforated plates. So, those kind of uh, things can be used for the screening purpose. It is just simple physical filtration. Okay. The openings of these uh, screenings are usually rectangular or circular. However, technically it could be of any shape, it could be of hexagonal, pentag uh, pentagonal. So, that way like it could be of any shape, but uh, for uh, most cases it is either kept circular or kept rectangular and depending on the size of this opening, okay, uh, what is the opening size here through which this material can pass through or can be retained through. So, depending on the size of the opening, the screens can be said as coarse screen, medium screen or fine screen. Okay. So, uh, there, there are other classifications as well. So, if you see the type of screens, uh, the coarse screen which are bar racks or bar screens uh, typically are of the uh, order of 6 to uh, 150 mm opening size. We have fine screens which are usually of less than 6 mm and micro screen which are uh, less than 0 0.5 micron meter. Then uh, there could be these particularly coarse screens could be hand cleaned or could be mechanically cleaned, then mechanically cleaned it could be chain driven reciprocating cake. So, there are variety of options, the fine screen could be of step type, drum type or uh, static wage wire type. So, there are variety of like uh, combinations that can be there for these screens. Now, if we see the coarse screen which is uh, the first one to be used particularly in the sewage treatment plants generally consist of bar screen or bar racks and sometime in conjunction with the uh, comminuting devices as well. So, they typically have a clear opening ranging from 6 to 150 mm 
which is uh, 0.25 to 6 inches in uh, the size. Okay. These are uh, more as a protective devices. So, it kind of used for protecting the rest of the plant operations okay. and these are specifically used to remove the racks and large objects. So, because the opening size is 6 to uh, 150 mm, so depending on the size it will remove only the particles which are larger than the opening size and rest can actually sneak in through. The bar skins are typically composed of vertical or inclined bar spaced at equal intervals with relatively large opening of approximately 25 mm. So, that is the approximate size, but it could range from 15 mm to 40 mm okay. and uh, it should be uniform across the channel through which the wastewater flows. So, if wastewater is let us say flowing through this way or through that way, so it should basically inter, uh, intercept the path of the wastewater flow that is what the objective of screening. So, uh, if we see the screenings uh, process, so uh, let us say this is our approach channel, okay. the water is flowing in like this and then we have the different bar racks here kept at the stake okay. and uh, then the flow is ensured that way. So, uh, since it is kept typically kept on inclined okay, and particularly the uh, manually cleaned one. So, uh, if you see the front view it will look like that where wastewater is flowing like this and if you see the top uh, site it will look something like that. Now, the cleaning process of screens are of uh, like very essential because its efficiency will depend on, on the cleaning otherwise if you do not clean and uh, things get accumulated on the surface of screens it could get choked and it will it may actually prevent the flow itself ok. So, uh, bar screens are usually hand cleans and sometime provided with the mechanical devices for cleaning depending on the size of the plant for small plants hand cleanings are good, but for very large plants many times the uh, mechanical devices are preferred for cleaning purpose. So, these cleaning devices are uh, racks which periodically sweep the entire screen removing the solids for further processing or disposal. So, uh, <clears throat> the entire screen will be taken out okay, and it is cleaned and then uh, it is uh, placed back. There are mechanical cleaners which utilize chains or cables to move the rack through these screen openings. Screens are racked to a platform with operate with uh, which should have perforations. So, whatsoever we are cleaning we should keep it on a platform which has bottom perforations. So, what so we, when you accumulate the uh, materials which is typically called screenings. So, whatever is filtered out means whatever is retained at the screen surface or these materials these paper cloths these kind of things are called screenings. So, the screenings which are retained are kept on a perforated plate it is kept on a perforated plate because that should permit the drainage drainage of water which is still holding in the screenings back to the unit. So, whatsoever water is still there when we are removing it that should actually again flow back to the uh, basic unit. Hand cleaning racks are usually set at 45 degree uh, angle, generally it could vary from 30 to 60 it is not necessarily has to be 45, but 45 is the most optimum. So, let us say like if this is your uh, flow velocity, so screens are kept like this okay, at certain angle theta, which theta is actually from 30 to 60 degree generally 45. Now, why it is done? because uh, it gives us a increase in the effective cleaning surface right. You see when the waste water is flowing like this, so the cross sectional area that we have through which the waste water flows vertically is this ok. So, if you put a screen like this, so this is the cross sectional area let us say the height is h and width of a screen is uh, b 
Okay. So, h into b is going to the cross sectional area through which your flow will take place, but when you keep it inclined. Okay. So, if this is your h and this is your b, so here you get square root of h square plus b square. So, uh, you get a much larger area than actually h okay. and the area of the screen that will be there. So, water is exposed to a larger area and also the with the same size of opening you can trap even smaller particles. So, how is that possible? Let us say you have a opening size of let us say a into b is your opening size okay, and you are allowing flow like this. Now, what happens if you incline this thing? So, your uh, b remains same, but a has turned inclined. So, uh, uh, an object of let us say size a almost size a will pass through this right because your flow is taking place like this. So, an object may be little smaller than size a will pass through this, but when this is inclined. So, the projected surface that you get your now this is a ok this op this is still b, but uh, your inclined surface is a. So, projected surface is actually smaller than a ok depending on the angle that you are having. So, depending on the angle that you are having theta let us say is actually smaller than a. So, how smaller is this? It is your uh, depending on how, how you are taking the dimension. So, it is going to be a sin theta that way ok. So, it is a sin theta and then what you will get is uh, the size of the particle a because a sin theta will generally be smaller than a. Uh, if theta is of the order of let us say 45 and that. So, a particle or uh, uh, something of size a will get retained because it will not be able to sneak through that. So, with the same size of opening it can give you better removal if you keep that screen inclined. Okay. The disadvantage here is however, if you are want if you want to plant a screen vertically. So, as you see here the area of a screen needed will be let us say let us say uh, you want to keep a screen vertically. So, I am b thickness and uh, b width and h height. So, area of screen needed is b into h while here if you inclined it this way for the same height h. So, now the area of a screen will be needed your uh, depending on which angle you are considering if this is your theta. So, uh, this will be now greater than h this height ok uh, h by sin theta that way. So, eventually what you see here that your area required of the screen is increase, this. but again the efficiency increases plus it is uh, difficult to take out the manual screen it is far more easier to handle the inclined screen. So, it uh, increases the effective cleaning surfaces and uh, it increases the effective operation as well. Mechanically cleaned screens are generally uh, sort of kept almost vertically because they are anyway mechanically driven we do not need to do hand operations much there. Such bar screens have opening 25 percent in access to the cross section. So, uh, if let us say your water is up to this, so we will have a little higher cross sectional area ok. But still the area is usually half in that required for the hand dragged screens because we are placing it vertically and not uh, giving too much of angle or inclination. Then we have medium screens, medium bar screens have clear opening of around 12 mm ok, uh, very less used though. These are uh, typically 10 mm thicks on the upstream side and taper slightly towards the downstream side. These are mechanically racked units mostly and used before all pumps or treatment units. So, as to uh, things can get protected and should not allow to pass in through ok. And uh, then the fine screens which are 
again mechanically clean devices because it is not possible to practically clean such devices manually uh, depending on the size. They are typically less than 6 mm opening, but commonly available opening range is from 0 0.35 to 6 mm. Okay. So, 35 micrometer to 6 uh, thousand micrometers are the actually range of the opening. The fine screens are generally used for pre-treatment of industrial waste to remove the materials which can form scum or form. So, those kind of things. In sewage they are normally not used, okay. uh, they are not suitable for sewage because there is a huge clogging possibility. Sewage flows usually have lot of such materials. So, uh, if even if we want to use a fine screen, so we'll, uh, we should actually first put a coarse screen, uh, then we should put uh, this uh, device to uh, like ensure a communicator kind of thing, so that it shreds these waste and then we can let it pass through the fine screen, but normally these are not suitable and not uses. This could be drum or disc type. Okay, uh, depending on the uh, placement and depending on the design. There are various micro screen screens which are not used as a pre-treatment, but the suspended solids are removed uh, using micro screen from secondary effluent many times. So, these are not in fact a screen that we have been discussing so far as a first unit. They can be used at a later scale and they are not very popular due to several disadvantages that improper removal of solid and inefficiency of holding solid fluctuations because with uh, if the solid load comes more these screens probably will not be able to withstand that load and that is why not that popular. Comminuting devices or grinder is actually again a mechanically cleaned screens. What it does it shreds the coarse solid materials. So, you are seeing here these kind of setups that are there. So, when it operates, so something which is falling in this gets completely shred and they are released in the wastewater. Okay. So, these, uh, this shred that uh, like shred these core solid materials and return these materials into the wastewater flow. These devices cut the retained solids and thus enabling them to pass along with the sewage and the solids from these uh, communicating devices may lead to more scum in the digester because we are getting more solids coming in. They are only recommended for smaller size STPs generally which are of size lesser than uh, 1 MLD, 1 million liters per day. So, these are the different type of screens and uh, we how we sort of locate or house these screens where we should keep these screens depends on the type of screens that we are using. Okay. So, screens which usually are uh, which are so like uh, when we try to place the screens the first criteria is that they should be readily accessible. So, wherever you are placing a screen should be readily accessible because screening requires frequent inspection we must keep on seeing what kind of materials it is being, what kinds of materials are being retained when it is going to be choked. So, the its maintenance, its operation, its, uh, its inspection is a must and for that purpose we should ensure that wherever we are trying to put screen units are actually a very nicely accessible area. Where screens are placed in deep channels, if you want to let us say put in a deep pits or channels then also we should ensure that there is a sufficiently wide approach to go and assess those things, assess from top, so that from top we can go there, we can pull out the racks, we can ensure the cleaning operations. There are ample working space has to be there for easy access and maintenance of the screen. So, that is uh, one important point where, where we locate and ideally it is located in the beginning of the treatment. So, the channel which is coming in we should put a screen and then allow the water to pass through for subsequent processing. For the um, like housing of the screen whether we should provide a screen chamber or uh, a house to a screen depends on what kind of equipment is there and what kind of climatic conditions it is working in. So, for say if 
uh, it is a hand driven screen and working in a normal climatic conditions, we actually do not need any screen chamber or any screen house, it, it can be there in the flow through channel. So, there is a channel we can just intercept that, put a screen over there in the channel and uh, let that pass through. So, whenever needed we can uh, take that out clean that we do not need any specific chamber or house for that is screens. Okay. But that is only if these are hand driven and good and kept in a like relatively uh, favorable climatic conditions. Even hand driven these things if you want to keep it in a let us say very cold climatic conditions where there is trapping uh, when it is getting trapped the ice is forming over there. So, your channels or your this thing is screens may actually get blocked over there. So, uh, those kind of things need to be ensured that uh, that are there. Then mechanically cleaned uh, screens are generally need some sort of suitable housing or we what we typically refer as screen chamber. So, mechanically clean devices because they will have mechanical equipments and in order to ensure their proper operation and safety we cannot expose these mechanical equipments to the open. Okay. There would be a possible wear and tear those kind of things uh, could uh, be far more if we kept left it in a open. So, it is better to keep it in a protective environment and we should ensure whatsoever housing we are providing should have proper ventilation and uh, should prevent the moisture accumulation as well as prevent the corrosive environment because these are mechanical equipment and if we allow if we do not put proper ventilation say let us say just we put a closed case and there is no ventilation. So, then it is likely that uh, there will be developing moisture and leading to the corrosive environment. So, in order to avoid that we must ensure that these are kept these are placed in a uh, nice dry environment and uh, there should not be chances of the corrosion over there. Then uh, when a water channel is passing through the screen, there is going to be certain hyd hydraulic uh, disturbances. So, screens are provided to remove the material which would impede the flow of the treatment plant. Okay. So, if you are in a flowing channel, if you are putting obstruction in the form of screen, it is obviously going to the disturb the flow conditions. Okay. So, if we keep on uh, as the more and more blockage or more and more retention takes place on the screen surface, it becomes more and more difficult uh, or their like head loss will increase that way and uh, flow will be disturbed more. So, a continuous cleaning arrangement should um, means if we uh, make a continuous cleaning arrangement it can keep the interferences to the solid material at a minimum level. But the periodic cleaning arrangements may cause surges of high flow after cleaning. So, how frequently we should clean uh, like depends on how much is trapped and we should ensure that the hydraulics is not disturbed. So, it is not that head loss has increased too much or uh, the flow has stopped. So, then we should clean it and it is not that we always keep on cleaning regular cleaning even though there is no disturbances in the flow. For the purpose of minimizing the hydraulic disturbances, the base of a screen is typically placed a few centimeters below the invert of the base of the channel. So, that uh, when the screen base is low, so the flow gets uninterrupted uh, like just there will be bar and screens that, that can be uh, which can capture that. But from base side there is the interruption is minimized. Okay. So, that is uh, important uh, aspect and grade of the influent conduit is steepened immediately proceeding to the screen. So, that the flow is ensured. So, if it is in a steeper channel, so we get a good flow over there okay. uh, and uh, because of the slope. So, we get a better flow and the bottom of the screen is kept little lower than channel itself. So, that the uh, disturbances or this thing can be minimized. <coughs> now, we need a adequate velocity through the screens. Okay. Uh, the velocity through the screen should be such that maximum amount of screenings or solid materials are retained without undue deposition. Okay. So, uh, that is one of the essential uh, criteria. 
generally the uh, our CPHEO manual recommends velocities of 6, 0 0.6 to 1.2 meter per second through the open area for the peak flow uh, this much should be there and velocities should not be less than 0 0.3 meter per second to prevent the deposition of solids. If it is less than that, so then uh, the solids may get deposited on the screen surface itself. Okay. Uh, so, generally a velocity of 0 0.8 meter per second is considered appropriate for the considerable amount of storm water while preventing any grit decomposition at the bottom of the screen. So, because that is also not recommended those things which can flow should actually flow through the screens. A uh, straight channel which is uh, like if, if a screen is kept in a straight channel, so, uh, so then a good velocity distribution is uh, uh, like ensured. If you are having a let us say if you are having a channel like this okay, and try to keep a screen here. So, because of the flow disturbances here there is too much of turbulence and the velocity distribution through across the screen is not good. So, it is better to have a, a like significant amount of straight channel before the screen so that velocity is nicely distributed in the channel. Okay. And this uh, sort of uh, maximize the effectiveness of the screen in terms of the retention. Now, when the flow goes through the screens, there will be head loss which will bound to happen. Okay. So, this head loss depends on the uh, quantity and nature of the screenings that are accumulated. The head loss can be calculated using this typical formula okay, as uh, per recommended by the CPHEO. So, uh, H which is the head loss in the meters is equal to 0 0.0729 V square minus small v square where V is the velocity through the screen in meters per second and V is the uh, before the screen in meter per second. So, in the channel what is the uh, like velocity and what is the velocity through the screens. Okay. So, the velocity here through the screen openings is V. Okay. So, uh, because we are trapping some part of area over here and for a constant discharge Q, the area here is this and the area whatsoever the screen or bar thickness and those kind of things are going to be. So, the area of for flow through the screens is going to get reduced and we will have velocity through the screens a little higher. So, that is why V is little higher as opposed to V and their differences multiplied by uh, the different uh, differences of their squares multiplied by 0 0.0729 gives the head loss. The value of uh, this head loss is usually 1.0.15 meter and should not exceed 0 0.3 meter for clogged hand screen. So, that is the criteria if it is exceeding that we know that it is high time to clean the screens. There is another approach to determine the head loss through these uh, bar screens okay, uh, from this equation. So, we have uh, another equation over here. Here H is the head loss in the meter, beta is the safe factor of the screen okay, and the safe factor will depend on what kind of shape it is. So, it is a sharp edge rectangular bar, the safe factor is 2.42, it is a rectangular bar with semi circle upstream 1.8 for circular bar 1.79 for rectangular bar with both upstream and downstream as semi circular is 1.67. So, we take the beta value accordingly and then W is the maximum width of the bar facing the uh, flow in meters, B is the minimum clear spacing between the bars in the meters. So, uh, what is the minimum clear spacing? H V is the velocity head of the flow approaching rack in the meters which is calculated as V square by 2 G. Okay. and theta is the angle of uh, inclination of the rack with the horizontal. So, uh, like if it is kept at 45, so theta becomes 45 that way. So, uh, this is another approach for estimating head loss. There is uh, for fine screens, uh, we use typically this formula for head loss estimation 1 by 2 g q by C a square, where q is the discharge in meter cube per second. C is the coefficient of discharge which is usually taken as 0 0.6 and A is the effective area of the opening in meter square. 
So, this way we can uh, estimate the head loss through the screens. Okay. Now, uh, at the end when this screening is complete, we have to think about the disposal of the screenings. Okay. So, whatsoever quantities which has been retained, now how much quantity will retain will depends on what type of screen as well as what type of sewer system and what are its characteristics. Okay. Uh, in municipal sewage, we are supposed to have high amount of screening as opposed to the industrial sewage. The quantity of screenings removed by bar screens mostly ranges from uh, 0 0.0035 to 0 0.0375 meter cube per 1000 meter cube of the wastewater treated. Okay. And uh, with an approximate typical value of 0 0.015 meter cube per 1000 meter cube of the wastewater. So, that is the typical value. The screening is usually uh, disposed of along with the municipal solid waste on sanitary landfill. There are other alternate options also. So, we can board this back to the wastewater, okay. we can uh, channelize this back to the wastewater. So, what if we like if we are passing the screenings through grinders or uh, disintegrator pumps. So, it gets grinded, disintegrated okay, and then we can channelize that back to the wastewater. The other options include incineration. So, if we are particularly having let us say large size of treatment plant which is generating too much of these bulk solid screen. So, uh, it could be incinerated although there are uh, environmental effects of that process. So, it is not recommended. Uh, for smaller treatment plants, uh, many places it is buried at the plant site itself. Okay, so, dumped in the ground in the plant site, okay. uh, but otherwise like uh, because of the nature of this, it is typically the solid waste material which are coming in the water. So, they can be trapped and uh, put back for processing along with the municipal solid waste in the sanitary landfill or whatsoever is, is being done with the municipal solid waste. So, that way we can uh, sort of handle the uh, screenings which has been coming from. So, we uh, conclude this discussion on screening and in next class we will talk about the uh, grid removal and equalization systems followed by the sedimentation in the later classes. Thank you.